Okay, hello everyone and welcome to Heart to Heart and we are on episode five today and my very special guest is someone I know very well, part of my lovely, loving family. She, <laughs> she is an emerging, up and coming multimedia artist. Please welcome Sharice May Villanueva. Hello. Hi. Hey. Hello. Oh, thanks for joining yeah. me today. You're welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I miss you guys yeah. so much. Yeah, I know. It, yeah, the pandemic has totally just been so isolating. I feel like it's yeah. just, yeah. Because <laughs> usually we see each other, what, every four months or so? Yeah. And like, yeah, like more than twice this long now. Yeah, yeah, totally. Have you just, been? How's everybody I've been? been? I've been? Well, I've been pretty good. It's you know just kind of surviving I guess you could say just, yeah you're like yeah. this has been a journey it's been yeah a it journey. totally has it has yeah oh my goodness so I have quite a few questions to ask you so I just want to get right into it you tell us how did your arts journey begin okay so it wasn't like my art journey wasn't really like always from <laughs> I didn't like grow up drawing or whatever because as a kid, I was always just very reserved and shy. I still am kind of like just keeping, like I keep things to myself, don't really <laughs> talk as much. And this like kind of that introversion I felt just really caused me to seek um, excitement through a lot of media such as like books or like TV shows or like stuff like that, but mainly books. And like an early childhood memory I have is that my mom would always take me to the library on like hot summer days and we would just wander aimlessly along like the aisles just to find books to read and like one um section that really caught my eye was always like the graphic novel section in uh the library and ever since I started I just picked up like random books that interested me I was just like really fascinated by how um you can tell like these elaborate stories and with like strong narratives with just like a combination of imagery and words like it was just so like I found it so fascinating and so ever since I was a kid I was really into the works by like I was really into Pokemon adventures and I loved Yu-Gi-Oh! Yes. I loved Akira Toriyama's work uh, who did Dragon Ball Ooh, and I was yeah. also a fan yeah I was a fan of uh, Clamp who did Cardcaptor Sakura <gasps> those are like yeah those are my favorites and like growing up like seeing these young these youth just put into these stories where <laughs> they were like strong and like capable, even despite they were like, what I just found that really interesting. And so my art journey really started through like, kind of like around grade four, I guess, where I started not really taking it, well, I took it kind of seriously, but I never really thought of it as like, I wanted it to be a profession, so to speak. I was just kind of doing it because it was fun and I, was, I got kind of good at it. Um, but I realized that I wanted maybe to per, like personally pursue art um, in middle school, like grade seven or eight, because I was about to branch out into high school where there is like kind of a talk about what do you want to be when you're older? It's It was just always the talk in high school. Like, what are you going to be after high school? And mm -hmm. it just really made me think. Art is like, you can feel content in like many different kind of worlds that you create when you're not content with your own. Like, I just really enjoyed that aspect yeah I like I remember in high school well I don't I don't know if they still have it anymore I don't know if you guys had careers class like civics and careers like the mandatory ones they don't talk about becoming an artist as a profession right no they like, never bring it up they I never... had that in high school uh the career like the civics and careers um it was a interesting experience because uh they would it was a, a dual credit. So it, their credits are held to like become one. And it was just so weird. They were cramming all this important information about regarding like resumes and like cover letters, getting a job and stuff mm -hmm. like that in like such a short period of time. But they really focused on like STEM, like, you yeah. know, like science and math professions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is, it was just a lot of pressure to feel like, you like 
especially when these jobs get considered like more successful than like art yeah jobs. more yeah. established I felt yeah, like exactly. I felt that way too I remember doing um careers and at the time I put down like a dancer or an artist that's what I want to do and they were like kind of no matches for what, for what uh, like what I put down and I was like oh is that how it is the arts is not oh, considered that's a so job unfortunate. That's yeah. so unfortunate because I feel like people think so much that oh you can't get a job in the arts but there's so many different fields and like expertises that it's kind of not valid in a sense because exactly. there's, so, there's so many opportunities in art I feel like and we can talk about this more in the interview but just like it's just if people actually took the time to consider it they'd be surprised because yeah yeah there's like um there there's more now because I think if, like there's more tech and there's yeah. more art based um, tech based art yeah so for there's sure. a lot and especially now that everything's online there's like 10 times more opportunities and like yeah. people can you you kind of have to dig deep like especially in Ottawa you have to kind of dig deep for the arts jobs but like uh when I when I started with the city I had no I had no uh knowledge of like arts-based jobs just more community uh hands-on based jobs and then I was exposed to like um the arts field with the city which is what I'm in now which is really nice but I had to like kind of dig and like experiment yeah. find my way through it how did you discover your preferred mediums and your preferred styles of art so in terms of art style it's, it's still something that I keep into like practice and I'm still trying to define it because I'd really like to just kind of describe it my style as like ephemeral meaning that it's like definitive in terms of how it's undefined in the current moment you know what I mean yeah it's because um I just find that like my art style, it tends to be like kind of fluid and it's like constantly changing and always evolving, just like, you know, the human human nature mm -hmm. and you, us as humans. And I think that relying on like, you know, art to be so um, flexible in a way, it keeps it refreshing, especially if it you have to do it constantly. It's just so refreshing in a way to have, to just always do, be doing something different or to always take risks and to really explore what you want to do. Um, but I think in terms of mediums, uh, throughout the years, I've like used a lot of different media for my artwork. And because I always just like, in general, I'm kind of easygoing. Uh, so I really like to just try everything once before just to see if I like it. And if I don't, well, that's fine, but maybe I'll still practice it, you know, to use it as a skill. But uh, I think a preferred medium I like to use that is recurring in some of my works is ink, especially recently India ink. Oh, and I, yeah. I really like uh, ink so much because, especially India ink, is because uh, you can really like wash it out to make it look like watercolor, mm -hmm. or you can really just keep it as it is and it's just so bold and defined. And that is just, it's just super interesting to just be able to like manipulate it into like a way you want it to look like, especially when you're trying to achieve certain looks. And again, with ink, uh, when it comes to <laughs> my childhood fixation on Japanese manga, it's just, <laughs> it's just perfect. I just, yeah. Um, but it's just in, to touch on art style again. Um, it's always been like an up and down thing for me. I grown out of like so many different art styles <laughs> and I think that's totally natural especially if you're a young artist um and especially if you were in school for like art and you took art classes and have art lessons you're going to be exposed to many different things that could potentially influence and affect how you draw or what you want to draw yes so yeah so like literally when I started drawing uh when I was a kid uh, obviously I was into manga so you can already guess what style it was <laughs> yeah it was like super like anime and like cartoony and it was just what I liked I guess or what I knew best because you know when you're a kid you just whatever yeah you don't <laughs> but, think about yeah, it you just do it yeah 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 exactly like that and then when I started getting into like the more high school years um 
more high school teachers would like consider it not really like as an art style or it's like it's not real art that kind of quote which you know yeah (laughs) it's a hot topic so it really switched my art style into just trying to focus on like semi-realism or realism Mm. yeah that kind of thing and it was hard (laughs) yeah yeah realism is one of the most toughest is one of the most toughest um uh, types of artwork ever I think that's like when it comes to arts classes that is probably for the most part like I mean that's the one that I was exposed to first the primary style that you're exposed to yeah 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 it's it like I, I'm not sure why, but maybe it's because um, I guess because everyone's looking at the same um, object in front of you or the same subject matter, so you can all create something similar. I'm not I'm not sure, but it is definitely one of the trickiest. It is. <laughs> I could never like as much as I tried. I I still that's one of the hardest, hardest, hardest things. I find it the most hardest but if you can really nail it and get really good at it it's the most rewarding you know yeah it's very I I just applaud real like hyper realist artists like it's hard work really it's so hard and you would think it'd be easy at first like just just getting into it like oh just be what I see or draw what I see (laughs) but now my art style I guess you could say I do try to focus on a little bit of realism but I'm realizing that not like realism, but I always kind of blend it with uh, like a more illustrative style, so mm-hmm. to speak, because I am interested in illustration, maybe. But I don't really draw anime art not much anymore. I mean, sometimes when I'm bored, I'll be like, let me try to draw in this because, <laughs> you know, for nostalgia's sake, you know, yeah. it's just uh because I noticed I noticed in with your painting with the two people yeah side by side it was like um I saw realism with a hint of like abstract which was super yeah it was a nice hybrid which I really liked yeah exactly yeah that painting um I was also inspired by it was like a final project for one of my classes and it was like a personal vision painting and we had to choose like different art movements or specific artists and then try to do a style of theirs and I was just it was just end of semester I was like burnt out I was like oh my god what am I gonna do this is the final painting and I guess I I was choosing to like portray kind of almost impressionism in a way Mm -hmm. like line work and color I don't know if that got across (laughs) that well (laughs) but (laughs) I was just you know but yeah that painting really kind of shows the blend between like abstract and like realism that I kind of want to go towards yeah that's that's super neat it's nice to not just uh, put yourself in like one box and like but just like mix everything yeah for sure be super versatile but if people just limit themselves to one sector of whether it's style or their aesthetic or like maybe even jobs they want to do or whatever it's just it's just so it's hard you know yeah. it's hard and it's just is it's okay to just be this be one thing and then another and then maybe even both like I don't know variety is the spice of life yeah <laughs> yeah it's the spice of life like it's just it should be celebrated more than it should be you know yeah because um, because I feel like if there's if there's no variety there's no growth so you recently you graduated from Algonquin College's Intro to yeah. Fine Arts program. Can you talk a little bit about starting and completing this program during the pandemic? Yeah, okay. Yeah, for sure. It's It was a really interesting experience, to be honest, because especially given that it's an intro, introduction to fine arts, so it's a studio-heavy uh, program. And knowing that all of my studio classes would be online and with no human contact at all was kind of a really foreign feeling for me, especially especially given that it's my it was my first year at college as like a freshman, because you always like 
just trudge along the four years of high school just waiting for that yeah. I'm gonna go to college and I'm gonna have like like that rose colored lenses kind the, of the, the yeah. college experience yeah exactly the on campus quote, experience yeah, yeah, yeah quote unquote and given the pandemic it, that wasn't possible so you know I had to really adapt to uh what 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 the learning system has become and so I think that well the the program was it was a good experience overall um it was very stressful at times I feel like because it was a lot of work <laughs> to put in and to also put out especially when you balance your personal life and like school mm -hmm. and it's so different when your personal life and school become merged because you're always at home. You're, you're there, yeah. It's yeah, all there. It's, it's, all it's school, always yeah. there. There's no break in between of, you know, going outside and, you know, going to school. There was none of that. It was literally just get up, eat breakfast, get ready to, for class, go to class, finish class, do homework, and then repeat for, like, yeah. always. <laughs> And it was very like almost compulsively robotic at times. I really learned a lot from the program, I feel like. Even though it's not really like a fine arts program because it's just an introduction, it really kind of served the purpose into like showing the basics. And like, even if it's just review and just to really like practice and like hone those skills that you're constantly using, it was, I'd say it was a pretty good experience what I had. The professors were nice and they really were understanding in terms of what the pro they try to make the program be like given remote learning and the students they were it, we were an interesting group and despite the pandemic we try we connected in a way for like social media and it was really I mean despite the pandemic I don't think it was like the worst experience I've ever had I think in a way it was quite rewarding because found a lot of stuff about myself and what I wanted to do and I think the purpose of like school especially if it's like arts programs or whatever um I don't think necessarily being in an art program is just a way to be like oh I have this talent it's about I'm going to be working on the talents that I have and want to pursue mm -hmm. and to figure out what I want to do later on exactly. and yeah and so in a complete retrospect <laughs> the program I would, I guess I would recommend it. Like Algonquin is a pretty good college, I'd say. I know you touched up on this a little bit, um, but uh, where do you draw inspiration from? Uh, kind of specifically uh, during the pandemic or throughout the pandemic or even before that, um, like where do you draw your inspiration from? And do you think that the pandemic has changed your uh concepts or your creative process so what mm. sort of impact has it had on you well to start with like in terms of the pandemic I feel like um it has influenced my work in a way given that I'm always kind of cooped in <laughs> inside <laughs> and just choosing to like try to just do sketchbook work or anything like that I think just having I've just not even as just an artist, but as a person, I feel like being secluded with yourself and just kind of always just in your head. I just find it just you're in your head a lot and you just think about a lot of things. Maybe it's just me, but you kind of just like realize certain things or just like you think about things through a different perspective, especially given how times have changed and are different. And it has influenced my work for that because I'm finding that given like how I'm feeling or me, cause I've always been kind of like an empathetic person. So other people's feelings sometimes become my feeling, you know, <laughs> that kind mm -hmm. of thing. So I feel like a lot of like themes in my work revolve around, well, it's either like the human experience or like my emotions. The pandemic really influenced the way I create art because it's kind of like, like, it's just like you're constantly exposed to like things, especially from the media. You're always 
exposed to things and it's just like this reel of like like terrible news and like stuff like that so that stuff like I've always felt like it affected me and of course it affects like everyone because we're all literally becoming so almost sedated in a way Mm -hmm. to the news we're surrounded by and to just see us like collectively just become so scared (laughs) it's just it's horrible and mainly on a better note I really not on a better note other things that like I draw inspiration from especially in these times um I really enjoy work based on like work of uh Gustav Klimt yes yeah oh, I really so yes Gustav Klimt I really what I enjoy about his work um especially is just you'll notice this when I talk about like artists (laughs) that I like I enjoy how there's the realism aspect especially when he does portraiture but there's like an ornate elaborate um decorative kind of elements to his work that make it just like unified in a way Mm -hmm. and I've always kind of been interested in drawing people or like characters anything like that people are like my main source of like when I go like what am I gonna draw and so I've always liked artists that have this hybrid of uh style and one of the other artists I draw inspiration from is a more outdated I guess you could say artist but he's like Japanese but Katsujika Hokusai ah yeah yes I love Hokusai's work and it doesn't influence me in the sense that I replicate and I draw the same subject matter as him because he focuses on like the natural world and like nature in like exaggerated like proportions but I love his use of color and how um again with like the mixture of realism and graphic to just create compositions that are very pleasing or like show kind of like whimsical aspects of life even though they're seen as mundane especially his uh popular work uh everyone knows it like the kanagawa wave off of kanagawa yeah yeah the big wave yeah that yeah everyone knows that piece. everybody and their dog yeah. knows that <laughs> <laughs> They're trying, of course <laughs> yeah that the way he just takes something as simple as like the ocean and manipulates it into this fantastical thing it's just always fascinating to me fascinating to me So as we both know, creating art is such a long and demanding process. How do you find the balance between social and personal and and work life? How do you find that balance? Especially since most of the time we're creating at home. I'm still trying to find a happy medium between working, not not working, but school life and uh, art to be honest because especially when I was taking an arts program it was kind of like art was like everything I did Mm -hmm. despite all that and I think a good example to show that um me trying to find balance is kind of dysfunctional because (laughs) I was super into bullet journaling for about like a week when I got into it and then after that I totally just dropped it (laughs) and I never picked up the journal ever again and it was just sad so I wasted that journal and I just I think finding balance is the most important thing that someone can do despite consistently making art and practicing because I feel like balance is just vital in terms of you like not feeling like you don't want to do it anymore which is like a burnt out from your passion I feel like so honestly right now I am trying to find that balance and I feel like it's more easier given that I recently graduated mm-hmm. so I don't really have school to focus on so now that you've recently graduated do you have any advice for um, any students that are looking to get into the art world yeah um I feel like one of the main things I think is for like young artists to know is that especially just for anyone in complete retrospect it's just really okay to not know what you want to do from the start 
and like whatever well like whatever walk of life you're coming from it's just it's so important to know that despite any pressures of society telling you that you need to know exactly what you want to do and you need to have it planned and you need to do this and that to become successful mm -hmm. like you to kind of be where you want to be I feel like you need to abandon everything you've known and just start from scratch and you really need to kind of stay true to yourself because the mm -hmm. most important thing is that you need to make art for yourself and not for other people <laughs> you yes. know I mean? yes. yeah you need to make art for yourself and not for other people and the lines kind of get blurred upon that especially when you do start doing like commission work or you're and stuff like that but the sole enjoyment and passion should always be your own from your own reason mm -hmm. and even like it doesn't I feel like rejection is just become so taboo in the art world because we just kind of like well not in the art world just like in general uh a lot of people just seem to pay attention more to rejection than like the little successes that they've had over their career mm -hmm. And sometimes rejection can be taken as a success, especially I know for myself, I would get rejected from some art programs, like it would hurt. And it would really make me kind of question like, am I like, should I be doing this? Or it's like, you know, like, am I even the, like good enough? And those kind of experiences you really need mm -hmm. in order to like, know you can be in the art world because that's just, <laughs> that's the way that, people grow as we say like that's the way people grow like we go through stuff we learn things we forgive ourselves and then we kind of move on and become better as people and yeah so for anyone who's trying to get into the art world I think it's just so vital to just really know yourself and to just accept yourself and really know what you want to do and also this is just a miscellaneous kind of advice I think it's like keep a sketchbook keeping a sketchbook yes. Yes. is really really good and some people like I know some people in my program like they were they found the ideas of sketchbooks absolutely abhorrent and they never kept the sketchbook until like the program and I'm not saying like it's bad if you mm -hmm. don't keep a sketchbook but it's just especially in terms of art school, sometimes the sketchbook is like the most vital part in terms of admission. Yeah, sketchbook. it's very, yeah, it's very yeah. helpful. It's very it helpful, is. not just for um, like a, like, like a, from a portfolio sort of standpoint, but also if you come across an idea right in the moment and you don't have something to jot it down or, or draw it or document it, you, you can lose it. And you can, you like, you can't go back to that idea and revisit it it's it's or it could sometimes it can sit in your head but it won't be to the same effect as in that moment unless like well that's how yeah. that's how I seem to see it so apart from art what has been keeping you busy during this pandemic I've been really just doing a lot of domestic stuff around the house <laughs> or yeah around like my house I we like clean a lot like help my parents out with cooking yeah. I think that doing stuff like that it's like it's so mundane and like but especially in these times that's like sometimes the most invigorating part of your <laughs> part yeah, of exactly. your day yeah and yeah it's just nice I feel like in a way it helps me bond with my family more mm -hmm. yeah especially how we're always together but I've been trying to like pick up new hobbies um during this pandemic other than art um well this is still kind of art related but I in my program uh at Algonquin we had a photography course oh nice for one of our, yeah for one of our for the second semester and so I literally I felt so bad but my parents like cashed out on like this DSLR camera Ooh. for me for Christmas yeah it's like a Canon one and so I use that for the rest of like the whole semester. And I loved that class. I loved the photography class. And I've recently, um, ever since high school, because I took uh, a course, it was like communications technology, but we would call it calm tech. And it really focused on digital media, like Photoshop and making films and photography and stuff like that. And I, I took it consecutively for like 
about two years. And I really started to be interested in photography in a way. So especially uh, during this pandemic, I've been trying to get into photography a little bit. Right now, do you have any pieces or projects in the works? Um, I was thinking about maybe opening up commissions. Not yeah. sure. Yeah, but opening up commissions. I uh, I do have one just from like a like a friend currently that I have to do, and she wanted like a lino block like print. So Ooh. yeah, I'm trying to. I love working with lino block. I've only done it like once, bit like from the program I was in, mm-hmm. but I really enjoyed it. Um, so. I'm thrilled to have that opportunity (laughs) because it's nice so where can everyone find your work um so (laughs) you can find my work I have this Instagram handle like I recently just started the account so this is kind of like a work in progress but the handle or the Instagram at tofu doroki it's a it's a punny name (laughs) (laughs) I don't know it is I'm it's cute. It. Yeah, I like I it. It's catchy. It I is. Know, I, have, I have a multiple like people or like my friends and then they're like, that's cute. Like, where'd you get mix that up? And I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was just, I don't know. Sometimes the best ideas that you have, you don't really try to make them it just happens. So Sharice, I just want to say thank you for joining me today. And I will leave Sharice's Instagram handle down below. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And we'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye.